This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about whether the U.S. government is preparing an attack on Bitcoin. We're getting some very interesting tweets from some insiders in government, and so I wanted to address these. Now, you know that I've been talking about different hypotheses about Bitcoin. This one from about a week ago is the hypothesis that the U.S. government will actually wants much higher Bitcoin prices as a way of fighting the Chinese central bank digital currency. But it's important to realize that governments are divided. There's lots of different uh, different factions that are fighting with each other. It's not a uniform uh, a uniform institution. So on the one hand, we have we have Wall Street, which is really on board with Bitcoin now. This is one of the things that gives me a lot of confidence because I, uh, I usually have found in my life that whatever's good for Wall Street is good for the U.S. government. There's a lot of money sloshing back and forth uh, between these two groups as well as people moving back and forth. And so if Wall Street loves something, especially at the beginning, especially if it hasn't blown up the economy like subprime mortgages, the government's not going to step in and do anything uh, against it. We just had some uh, inside news here from Morgan Stanley that they're about to provide a Bitcoin investment vehicle, an ETF, uh, etc. And they're moving, they're trying to get all their uh, RIAs on board with selling Bitcoin. So these are these are bullish signs for Bitcoin. We have lots of billionaires like Musk and Michael Saylor, both buying Bitcoin personally, at least in the case of Michael Saylor, and also buying it for their balance sheets. So it's easy to be bullish on Bitcoin when the billionaires like it and Wall Street likes it. I think these are very powerful uh, constituencies, and that's going to be very hard to go against Bitcoin when so many wealthy people like it. That being said, we are in a uh, an acute fiscal situation where the federal debt, the total debt of the U.S. federal government, is uh, is hitting approximately, I call it twenty eight, uh, twenty six. Uh, 27 trillion dollars and this has reached the point where it's it's much higher than US GDP and this is really a huge problem it has been a problem since the whole banking system was bailed bailed out in 2008 and 2009 and so we have this situation where the giant iceberg that's about to hit the boat is US government debt bitcoin is clearly a lifeboat. And what is it a lifeboat from? Well, I'll give you a perfect example here. We have the markets pricing in future inflation uh, on the five-year note. So this is the market's expected inflation at the five-year level. It's called the break-even inflation rate. And it's calculated by looking at tips versus regular treasuries. Anyway, it's north of 2%, 2.39%. This was usually never allowed to run so hot. 2% was really the limit that was imposed. But we've had a lot of comments from Powell uh, Chairman uh, Jerome Powell over the past 12 months that they are going to let the Federal Reserve, which is the U.S. Central Bank, they're going to let inflation run hot. And it's actually the actual inflation rates are obviously much, much higher than this. This is all part of sort of the CPI fallacy. That being said, even if this one is correct, if this projection is correct, 2.39% inflation rate on the five-year break even. Uh, and then the five-year treasury, just the straight nominal treasury, is yielding less than 1%. So anyone can see that if you are making 0.81% on an investment, you usually have to pay taxes on the, the interest income. And then it's being depreciated by 2.39%. You're actually losing money in real terms. Your purchasing power is going down. Now, this is how the U.S. government is going to try to escape from this debt load. It's going to, ret it's going to let inflation run hot, hotter than the returns that you can get. You can't get uh, these returns uh, safely uh, anywhere else except for, except for treasuries. The problem is when treasury rates are below the inflation rate, you lose money, you lose purchasing power, and the government is able to grow its way out of the situation. So that is the basic lifeboat. If you're in if you're in something like Bitcoin, you are immune from these effects. And this is one reason uh, that the uh, the U.S. Treasury and the U.S. Federal Government is worried. People they're worried about people getting out of, especially institutional investors, other central banks, getting out of the fixed income market, which doesn't yield anything anyway, and you're losing money in real terms, exiting these these bonds and going 
into Bitcoin. So before we move on to the critique and my, my worries about a U.S. government attack, I would just ask you, if you're enjoying this video, to hit the subscribe and like button. So we talked a little bit about, about this a couple of days ago, Yellen coming out, talking about how extremely inefficient Bitcoin is. She's obviously a huge opponent of Bitcoin. Uh, I thought it was ironic that a day or so after she made this announcement about Bitcoin being inefficient, the whole Fed banking system went down, the whole Fed wire system went down, and no one was able to send any money for a few hours. Of course, you could send the, you could send the money using Bitcoin. Just a little bit of an irony or, or karma uh, in, in effect here. But what I'm talking about today is that this may have been, this Yellen speech may have been a trial balloon to see, to test investor sentiment, to test the market's reaction to what may be coming down the road. Now, I'm getting this information from Harold Malmgren, who is uh, born in 1935. He's 85 years old now, but he's the consummate insider. He worked for JFK. He worked for Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford. He's a real Washington, D.C. insider. And as such, it makes a lot of sense to follow his Twitter feed. And as he says many times, he only tweets about those things that he knows about, but he's got still has a lot of friends in very high places. And so someone asked him a day or so ago, did uh, is Yellen's criticism of Bitcoin a trial balloon warning? And Malmgren confirms that it is, that there is new tax policy possibly being discussed. And he basically says a little bird alerted to him that Yellen is going after Bitcoin or is planning to go after Bitcoin. She is the, uh, as uh, Gary Halbold here talks uh, talks about in his tweet reply, Yellen would be the, the right cabinet member to do it. She's the former Fed chair. She's uh, been in government for a very long time. And then Harold Malmgren responds by talking about how she's been thinking about central bank digital currencies for many years. And this is something she's very interested in helping to develop and she likely just sees it as a question of timing. Now, the uh, the problem with this is that this could mean that some government action is coming through the U.S. Treasury and through Janet Yellen and and Harold Malmgren, who is uh, very high up source, as we said. Uh, this was several little birds have been uh, been telling me. So we have this faction within the U.S. government, obviously, that wants to do something about Bitcoin. And the real question is, what can they do? Malmgren says, uh, expect the IRS to establish a task force to tax all profits from crypto trading. Well, it's already sort of has to happen. You should be you should be paying taxes on this in the U.S., especially if you're trading on centralized finance exchanges like Coinbase. All the activities being reported to the IRS, but this is talking about uh, that there would be severe penalties for. Uh, ignoring any requests for access to holding. So theoretically, what could happen is the IRS could say, uh, we want your private key. We want you to disclose completely how much Bitcoin you own. And uh, currently, there's, I, I believe in this year's tax return, there is a box that you'll need to check if, you've, if you traded or invested or, or hold any cryptocurrencies, including Bitcoin in 2020. So this is definitely... Uh, this is definitely happening. And then Malmgren says he expects all the local uh, and state tax authorities to jump in too and try to either tax it to death or really keep track of how much Bitcoin people are owning. The other sort of attacks that can happen is that you, the uh, U.S. Treasury could impose capital controls on Bitcoin or try to try to impose capital controls on Bitcoin. They could... Uh, it seems unlikely at this point that they'd shut down things like Coinbase and Gemini, the uh, the crypto exchanges, but they could regulate them much more strongly. They could try to control the on-ramps and off-ramps. For example, maybe they could require Coinbase saying you could only buy $100 worth of Bitcoin every month. You could have these sort of limits on the amount that you could purchase. They could also, as I talked about in a previous video, they could impose an unrealized capital gains tax. So normally in the U.S., you only pay taxes on assets like stocks, for example, when you sell them. As long as you hold them, you don't have to pay any taxes. But once you sell them, you pay, you you uh, create a realized capital gain, 
and then you pay taxes on that. An unrealized capital gains tax would be where your position gets marked to market. So if you bought one Bitcoin at 10,000 and it's now 50,000, your unrealized capital gain is $40,000 and you might have to pay taxes on that every year even though you haven't sold it. So there'd be sort of a mark to market thing going on as happens with futures. Now, I think doing something like this would be extremely stupid. And I think it could actually trigger a financial crisis. At this point, Bitcoin is big enough that, and there's some very strong players involved in it, obviously, but it's big enough that it could kick off a financial crisis if any of these strict regulations are imposed on Bitcoin in the US. If, for example, you can't move your Bitcoin, if the off-ramps, the easy on and off off-ramps have been closed or strictly curtailed uh, and uh, you, you maybe you don't want to pay taxes on it or you don't want to pay unrealized taxes or maybe you have to pay taxes on your Bitcoin. Uh, so what you might do is you say, well, I can't exit my Bitcoin or I don't want to, so I'll just sell some stocks. I'll just sell some of my NASDAQ stocks instead to raise some money to pay for my Bitcoin tax or to pay for my living expenses when I was expecting instead to, to use my Bitcoin for that, this could trigger an avalanche of selling. Also, if the, Bitcoin, if the, uh, if the U.S. Treasury, if Treasury uh, tries to go after Bitcoin, it really would be a signal to the whole world about how bad the U.S. fiscal situation really is, this problem with debt that we've been, that we've been talking about. And if you ban all lifeboats on a boat, that really tells you something about what the situation of the boat is. It, it almost certainly means that the boat is uh, is going down or is about to hit an iceberg. Now, which faction will win? We have the, uh, the, the we have Wall Street. We have the billionaires. We have all the people in government, people, senators like Cynthia Loomis, who are Bitcoiners, and then we have the Bitcoin haters in government. People like Yellen, who have never contributed anything positive to the world except trying to confiscate people's wealth through money printing and inflation. Which side is going to win? Well, Bitcoin, as we've discussed many times, it's completely decentralized. It's all over the world. The full nodes are all over the world. The miners as well. It's open source software, which is protected under the First Amendment in the U.S. It doesn't mean that uh, they cannot go after this form of free speech as they've gone after other forms of free speech. But it's very difficult to, to stop. Uh, U.S. government was never able to stop marijuana, for example. And um, Bitcoin is even easier to hide than a marijuana plant. It's easy to store. It's easy to leave the country with it. You can walk across a border and just memorize your, your recovery seed, just 12 words, and you could take a billion dollars in your brain wallet that way. So it's very difficult to stamp out. And what will happen is if one country really goes after Bitcoin and Bitcoiners and makes it difficult for them, they'll just all move to a country where people are more friendly, a more uh, Bitcoin friendly uh, jurisdiction. And so this is a risk. It's a little bit like, as I've said in previous videos, it's like banning the internet. You could ban the internet in your country or you can strictly limit it, but you end up shooting yourself in the foot by doing this uh, because you're not allowing access to a very powerful modern form of technology. So Bitcoin cannot be stopped. It can certainly be uh, driven out of certain countries or driven underground. So I don't think the US would be stupid enough to do this, especially in this really early stage. The way the US handled the internet was to uh, sort of stand back and let it develop in the 90s and early 2000s. And they tried not to tax it. They tried to just let it grow and observe it and really see what it was going to become. It seems to be that's the official policy with Bitcoin as well, to sort of uh, let it grow, definitely definitely tax it, at least at a reasonable level, tax it just like stocks. Uh, so you pay taxes if, you, if, you, if you're trading it or if you exit an investment position. It seems to me unlikely that uh, that Yellen would be successful here. That being said, if this faction is strong enough, we could see something like this uh, thrown at Bitcoin. So all Bitcoin long-term hodlers need to be aware of these risks, and you need to really have a plan. I'm not going to sell my Bitcoin no matter what happens. I'm going down with this ship. I'm prepared to uh, to move somewhere else if the U.S. doesn't treat me well, though I certainly hope I can stay here. This is my home. This is where I was born. Um, so hopefully something like this doesn't happen. But I just wanted you all to be aware of this. 
if you see the sudden uh, headline, you will not be surprised because Malmgren is to be taken extremely seriously. And when he talks about that things are these rumblings are happening at the uh, at the Treasury or at the IRS, it's something certainly to take seriously. That being said, if uh, an attack on Bitcoin like this were to happen, you can think about what happened to the price of marijuana plants when when cannabis was outlawed in the U.S. in the uh, in the 1930s. The price goes up and uh, it becomes even a, a more valuable thing. It, bec- it moves to the black market. It goes underground, but the value goes up. So I don't think I think that a U.S. government attack on Bitcoin is really sort of the ultimate endorsement because you don't attack something that is not uh, that's not an enemy that's not threatening you so it would be bullish for bitcoin in the medium to long term in the short term though it could really cause a lot of panic and so everyone needs to have their own plan and be ready for something like this to happen we can't underestimate what the official system will do what people like yellen will do uh, when they feel attacked and the bigger bitcoin becomes the more formidable an opponent it is and the dirtier the politics and the taxes may get. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.